All right, so the coffee machine goes for about 325 US dollars and I'm hoping to replace a $25 part, $28 from Amazon free shipping um, and fix a machine that costs 10 times as much. I apologize for the lighting. The whole time I'm going to be trying my best to get good light on the subjects and there's going to be shadows and things that aren't perfect but um, I figured it was worth my time to video this and this is the reassembly the disassembly was not videoed because I didn't think about it until I was about halfway through and then I just figured that anybody that wanted to know how to take this apart would just watch the video in reverse so here goes. It's going to be in stages and hopefully I don't uh, skip anything. I'm going to try to be pretty inclusive with this and that's about it. But these are the two pumps as you can see. The old one on the right um, is uh, 4.1, uh, 41 watts and uh, the new one is a 52 watt machine. It's a little bit more power. It's not a 1 to 1. It's a 1 to 1.5. So it's probably going to um, create uh, water a little faster than the old units. Other than that, they're identical in every way, right down to the place where you put the capacitor, where they glue the capacitor into the old motor and pump. So that's there's even a spot for that. So it's pretty much identical, and it's worth noting that these caps that come on the brand new one, if you're lucky enough to get that, it's because this is primed with water already. It's water primed, so if you pull this cap off, there's water, it'll dump right out. So be careful when you're reassembling this to keep as much water in the pump as possible because, as you know, that's important with pumps. So, here goes. Also, it's worth noting, when you're taking this thing apart, um, I've got several weeks in between when I started this project and when I've had time to come back to it. But I would recommend kind of doing what I've done here, and that is taking and placing things in the order that they were taken off. And if you can, you know, drawing pictures and showing the bolts in the orientation because these these screws are not the same size in many cases the the, the screws themselves and then um, identifying where they come from and then in the order that you took them off so that's kinda of what I'm doing All right. We're going to fit the uh, motor into the um, it's a rubber chassis and um, you might be able to just force this through and I would recommend doing that if you want to keep the cap on there and just push it down in into the rubber chassis and then once you've got it in there real good, uh, just slip that end over. And then uh, there you have it. So the next step is to get the pump connected to this valve. And... Um, Basically, this is going to end up going facing down this way in the chassis. So just know that that's going to flip over. But um, that screws right into this piece. Remember, this piece is primed from the factory where you bought this. So have it sitting up like that because it's got, it's got water on the inside of that. And just screw that in. And I'm going to mention something to you here in a second, which is probably going to be relevant. 
try not to cross thread this it's very important it's plastic once this gets try to get this in the light once this gets threaded into place you're gonna find something here and you might have to change something if you're a little bit like me you want to make sure this is tight okay and when it's tight you're gonna flip this over and this is going to be in this position and this is going to be facing out this way it's pretty important that this is 90 degrees perpendicular so what you'll notice is there's a groove on both sides of this what this allows for is a tool uh, in this case I'm just going to use a, a half inch this is close enough it's probably a metric um, to hold this in place and just make sure that you screw this in plenty tight so make sure that's in tight and then once that's in place mine was off by about 270 degrees you might have to turn this in the chassis in the pump so that it's perpendicular and that way when you lay it down in here to where it's going to rest in that spot that this is facing out that door because that's the door you're going to put a pipe through there's a little pipe fitting there and then this is where the leads go and connect with these browned brown lead right here so that's that step I want to show you something else these two leads which um, run to the pump which are um, here and here you're not going to be able to easily take them off and I don't know if you can see this on video but they've actually bent these up the plastic pieces are bent up here and here preventing the leads from sliding out you're going to have to bend those back down and these tabs are going to have to be bent flat then you'll be able to slide these off otherwise you will not get these leads off um, all right next we're going to partially reconnect this pump to the leads the leads are really in two sets one sets held together and that's the bottom and then this is the top lead uh, one's slightly darker brown but yours might be completely different color than mine uh, you also might want to move this out from the holding position that you had it in earlier all right so that it's a little more flexible you have a little more play essentially there's three pieces that get placed in here one is this I think this is a capacitor or a resistor or something like that that needs to go into this spot here notice that it was glued down in the former um, motor um, so I'm not going to be gluing it it's a tight enough tolerance just sliding that into place like that where I feel like it's good enough so I'm not going to re-glue it it's insulated it's completely um, on its own there and it's not touching anything else where it might short I'm not an electronic engineer but that what we're going to connect next is this half of the circuit make sure that's plugged in as far as you can forward and if you really want to be sure you're not going to be able to see this too well but you can lift this up there's a little tab in there I discussed it on part of the breakdown which will help to hold that in place but that you want to make sure that that's solidly in place now if it jiggles loose um, we'll have to get that here's the other half of the equation here this is a uh, 
This is going to get connected next because it's a short lead and I don't want to pull it out of the chassis any further than it is. It's a short lead. So I'm going to connect that next. But that's that's the step that we've we've just executed. All right. So the next step is going to be reconnecting uh, this fitting. Uh, this this fitting goes on here. This is also uh, water primed on this side. You can see the water right there. So be careful that it's kind of upright. Um, this is not held in place by a clamp, so which means it's a really low pressure um, feed. And that's going to go there. But you're also going to need to connect this spring. This spring will go here and it will there's a lip. There's a lip right there that it needs to go over. And at least the first part goes over it. And I kind of found it helpful to kind of screw it on in a clockwise fashion. If I screwed it on in a clockwise fashion, it kind of went on by itself. All right, back. Again, screwing this on, there's a lip in there. You want to get it over that lip and you want to do so in a uh, clockwise fashion. It will go on. Um, second, you want to get this behind that base right there. That's important. And finally, I don't know if you can see this in the light, but I'm going to secure this post at the bottom of the spring underneath this um, screw. This screw, which I've pulled out about two or three rev revolutions, but not completely out of the chassis. You'll use a Phillips head, and um, I'm going to secure this post as it goes underneath that location. And I'll return once that's been executed. Hopefully you can see this. All right, and we're back. Um, what I did was, is I just used a pair of needle nose pliers and I just grabbed the end of this, um, this post and then um, I fed it down below the screw and then I simply used a Phillips screwdriver and tightened that down. That post isn't going anywhere now, but that post in spring needs to um, be flexible. This whole thing's going to move in the chassis. And then, of course, you've got um, these two rubber uh, posts go down into that post position. And at this point, um, I'm going to locate the remaining lead, which is a dark brown lead, which I have not connected yet. And I'm going to connect that lead to the other post on the motor. We're going to make sure that's in place. And once we're we're pretty sure that that looks good. You know, I might take a thin screwdriver. I know you probably challenged for a light here. And I'm going to bend that up a little bit so that it doesn't come off. Because this thing's going to be shaking. This thing's going to be moving. And I want to make sure that that does not come off its post just like I did earlier with the other one. And that's where we're at right now. All right, next step, just for ease of putting this thing back together, let's um, let's put this pipe, channel it where it needs to go, and let's put this um, these two water pipes that come from the, the main water boss attached to the water boss here, which we'll eventually plug in. Let's get them into the locations in the chassis. We discussed that earlier there's two perfect locations in the chassis and this is going to help us when we take all this and we try to feed this back through the main body or the frame of the of the, of the machine and it'll just be a, a cleaner insert if we can get those out of the way and that's just going to be helpful that's all that is all right next um, we removed a hose when we disassembled this and the hose um, connected to this piece, this valve right here, 
and it went through the wall and it came out this other side and it connected into um, well there's a valve over here and I'll show you in a minute where that is but it's right here it's got to go through the firewall here and come through here and connect there and that's what this is this this right here is is that hose and um, I may have shown you a screenshot earlier of how I organized things in order that I took them off so that when I put them back I put them back in the same order just reverse so we're going to be putting these on next and I'll show you how that goes in a second so we're going to make sure that that hose is all the way in we're going to get a good handle on the valve body and then we're just going to place that down easier but it has to go out the back side and I guess it wasn't lined up but once it get out, gets all the way through you'll see it it sits almost flush like that and we're going to now um, do that with the other side which is um, see if I can peel away enough things here so this gets out of the way um, which fits in right here so we'll fit we'll fit that in and the other end of this um, small hose feeds into this valve body right here and you're gonna have to kind of get it so it's as far in there as you possibly can and I don't even think you're gonna need needle to those pliers to put that through that uh, hole right there which will clamp it into place and you won't be able to you won't be able to move that so that's the piece we just executed we put in both sides of the hose um, back on this valve body to this valve right here and that's that step all right so now we have the components we've been working on and we're gonna put this back into the actual frame the frame is pretty much wide open and just has this hose that we have to work through the chassis so hopefully we can get this on on video okay but work the power cord through first make sure that the hose the hoses that are the feeders don't bind and start to work the chassis easing it through <clears throat> making sure that that hose stays on a proper side just working this through <clears throat> you're gonna have to flip it over now because this hose here that we've got needs to go through uh, the upper part of the chassis right there because that's where we're gonna feed it through and then complete The merger of the two sides and it should go into position like that and just once you've worked it through the bottom um, this is about as far as it's going to go in there um, we are not going to hold it down with screws on this side this is the bottom side um, we could probably pull these out is they're not going to need to be in the chassis any longer it's almost better that they're free because they're going to have to plug into the boss down here shortly and that's I just want to show you that so we're just going to turn this over probably want to get the power cord going out the right side and get the boss out of the way we're going to be working we're going to be working on the top side next, and that's when we're going to come back. So, um, in order to separate uh, the two halves, the bottom from the top, and slide this piece up and out, which it will come out once the screws are released on the bottom. Um, you're going to find after you take this um, 
control off. There's uh, two mounting screws right here and right there. Um, it's it's mounted like it's mounted like that. And there's the arm comes out the side. You're gonna find that the two sides um, you're not gonna be able to pull out the entire uh, piece from the chassis and it comes right out the top like this until you defeat this. This hose is connected to this spout and there is a clamp. It's a PEX or a uh, I don't know what they call this. I think they call this a Otocron PEX. It's a special hose clamp and you'll find one just like it on both ends. And if you do not remove one of them, um, unfortunately this piece attached to this piece and the inability to slide this piece anywhere because there's a ball at that chassis, in that chassis right there, so that it can pivot really well, it cannot be removed. So you're going to have to take one end, and I'd probably suggest this end, um, off. And I would suggest getting another hose clamp, uh, one that's a little more manageable probably, similar size because there's tight quarters in there once you get this thing slid back down in there. Um, but similar size, either that or another PEX. You probably will not have a PEX tool. I don't. I've only been doing mechanics for 50 years and I might have seen this once before. But basically, you're going to have to defeat this and get this off. One more thing worth noting before you remove the hose clamp, try to mark the orientation that the current hose is. I've placed some black markers from Sharpie right here, which pretty much aligns with the leads that go into this piece right here, just marking the top so that, because this twists, this twists a lot inside the chassis. And once you take this piece off, um, it's gonna twist, this is gonna twist, uh, you know, 360 degrees down here. And, you're not going to know what orientation you had it in and once you get the other hose clamp back on there when you reassemble this you're going to want to know what was top because this 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 does a lot of twisting and you're going to want to put it back the way you had it so just a suggestion that you mark that all right i'm back after a few unsuccessful attempts to um get the used PEX clip, which looks like that, closed down back over that little lip there. Um, even if you had a PEX tool, I don't even think you could do it. Perhaps you could. I went to the hardware store looking for another hose clamp and discovered that this is a very rare size for a hose clamp. Turns out that something like this, which is a uh, one quarter inch to five eighths, is uh, all that Home Depot or Lowe's or your hardware store will offer unless you have a superior hardware store. So, it's also a little bit wider. So this is quite a specialty fitting right here. Online, they're difficult to find. So my idea is since I don't have um, a hose clamp that will fit this diameter, is perhaps to try to increase the diameter of this, of this pipe. So what I might use is some weather stripping or I might use some electrical tape or a combination of thereof. Cut it to whatever width I want to. Increase the maximum outside diameter of this pipe and then use my um, 
you know, cinch it down to a quarter. This thing will reliably become a quarter of an inch. So really, all I need to do is increase the diameter by that much. And I think that's doable. So come back to you when uh, I've got something. Okay, update. Here's what I've done. I've simply put some rubber weather stripping around as tight as I can. Then I wrap that in electrical tape. And therefore I've increased the outside diameter of this thing close to 5 eighths, which is the maximum size of this. I've just opened these jaws up a little bit more and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try to get it on there and see how it how it sits. I'll update in a minute. But right now this pipe is flush to where it needs to be and it's probably sitting on the outside lip and it's cranked down. I'm I'm really happy with this. Um, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to see if it, if it can be mounted now, and that'll be the next phase. The next phase is to simply uh, get this turned around and drop down right here. Uh, while you're doing this, try your best not to bend these posts uh, for these leads right here. Uh, just something I just did. Thanks. Back in a minute. Okay, so the next part is going to be getting this steam valve mounted to these two posts right there. And um, the hose will just want to twist in that direction. And make sure that you're lined up with, you know, the actual where the hose, uh, the, the valve control for the steam valve is going to go. Um, you know, that's always good that it goes through the hole. Then you know you're you're writing at the right place. And I'm going to take these two screws, uh, which I've labeled, and I'm going to use those to screw this down, and I'll come back when I'm done. So the next thing we do is we're going to take these two leads, the positive and the negative. And it's always really good that you don't reverse polarity on stuff like this. So when I took it off, um, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but there's a plus and a minus. So I know that when this goes back together, um, the red is going over here. Let's port that. And the black is going over here. And that matches the polarity uh, that I wrote down before I took it apart. So that's the next step. Um, the next step is going to be to um, take the top mounts. This is a picture that I drew. It's the front of the, the machine. It shows the dissimilar sized screws and the regular sized screws. I believe there's three sizes here and I'm going to drop them into the chassis and what that'll do is it'll hold the chassis to the frame and um, yeah I mean it's they're very simple right there alright those are in place um, impossible to see them in this light but they're down there it helps if you have um, a magnetic screwdriver because these screws are magnetized and you'll be going down about five or six inches into some of these recesses and it helps if you have control over the screw. Um, according to my notes, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to reassemble the water boss to the water intake and that's done on the opposite side. I'll come back when we've got that ready to go. Okay. So we flipped the unit over and we're on the bottom now and um, the power cord is where it needs to be. Um, it can be moved by the way if you prefer a power cord that comes out here or here. This is the time to do it. Um, this, is, this of course is the back 
but um, just I'm leaving it where it was. But the water boss um, drops down nicely into this position. It helps if you take pictures of this unit before you do to make sure absolutely that one has a red wire and one doesn't and that the polarity on this is correct. But I'm simply going to take these screws and mount these down on, uh, to, the, to the boss and I'll come back when that's done. Okay, we're back. So, um, three screws are in place and according to my notes, the next thing that we're going to be um, assembling is, is the bottom and then um, I have it labeled um, so that the uh, front, oh I see, the front is over here and since these are pretty much almost all of them the same size except for two of them they should drop right into place and uh, that here's the front bottom uh, right here Hold on. That's picture um, here's the front right here um, and those two smaller screws will be the ones that are used here but right now we're going to um, reassemble the bottom and the bottom part is just a piece of plastic. I'm back. I need to mention something. Um, of the screws that connect the bottom, they are going to be a special, let's see if I can get this to focus. This is a special um, Torx bit. Okay, this is a Torx uh, 20. All right, so it's got the safety proof, tamper proof. Come on, baby, focus. I don't know if you can see this, but it's the tamper proof one that has the hole in the middle. Um, if you're like me, um, you didn't have one of those. You had the regular Torx bits, and I had those, and. These will be um, useful for you just once. This was a $5 bit, and rather than buy the $30 kit, um, I opted to just, um, do, just do one. So we're just going to use it once and hope I don't have to come up against any more tamper-proof um, screws in the future. I usually torque most of the stuff down at the end after I've assembled um, all of the screws. So I'm just going to put most of them in like 80% and then when they come, when I need to torque them down, I'll torque them down in a, in a star pattern. I'll come back when that's done. Just thought I'd mention that. Okay, now that those are in place, it's time to flip her back over. And... Um, Looks like the top is going to be the next thing to go. I am um, happy that I can probably get to this if I have any leakage or trouble. Um, I don't want to, but uh, it's about as tight as I want to make it. It's a plastic. This is a piece of plastic. If you crush it, you're completely screwed. So I'd rather have it like this and see if it actually works right away before uh, taking it any further. And then there's a key on the side of, of this arm and then you're going to match that key up to the, the wand. It should just pop straight over. If not, then this is turned. I marked this. And I took a picture of it too. Let's uh, let's just see if this pops on. I don't want to force it, but yeah, that's on. Just make sure that it it does its thing. That's all we want. Steam, no steam. That's it. And then, um, oh heck, you can probably just leave it like that for right now. Um. I was wrong about oh 
If it was wrong about the uh, power cord, it has to come out the back in the middle. You can reroute it anytime you want to without opening the chassis at all. And this piece, uh, this looks like it was part of this. And um, I must have just broke that off when I had the thing upside down. And this is going to connect to the top. It's going to connect to the... Uh, fitting on the top. I um, There's only one way it's going to go into this fitting because as you can yeah, see if you can make this out. It's also keyed. Hopefully it focuses on this but you can see it's keyed on the top here if this focuses. Right there and right there. So there's only one way to insert this cable. Uh, we're not going to mess that up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and show you how the last two screws come in when I'm done. So that's in place now. Um, this piece is not too complicated. Um, it just covers the connection. You may want to use a blunt object to push and seat the electrical connection down, but all this does is prevent water if any should get into this area from um, entering that circuit and that's good we put this back together it's the same way we took it apart okay um i might not get this on the take but if you pry the lid off um you may have broken either or both of these uh, slots these these two tabs go into slots on either side, right there and right there. And so when you put it back in, it's important that you slide, put it down, position them behind it, and slide this thing forward into place. Meanwhile, you have to leave the back up so that the back will clear these screws because ultimately the black part um, goes this black part goes and screws through here into the lid. Actually, that was much easier than I thought it was. Just make sure that when you um, slide it, that you hold and pinch in the sides, and then when you push it down and slide it forward, it's just, it's really almost no effort at all. So I was kind of struggling with it the first time, and I guess um, I didn't need to be. So I'm gonna put these two uh, screws in now which will um, lock the hood in place and uh, when I come back and I'm not going to strip this out because this is plastic but um, when I come back this will be assembled okay and that's it so those two screws go in real easy and um, one last thing just flip it upside down the first thing that I noted that I took off was the the cover to the the actual uh, press. So the steam press. There's a screw that goes through the middle, and I'm just going to put that back into place now. I'll uh, come back when that's done. Thanks. And that's it. We're done. Again, it's the DeLonghi EC6. 50M or let me check the model number exactly. This is the 680M, but I understand that there's other versions of the 680 um, which work the same way. The feel on this ball joint is still pretty good. Um, and this is the original part that we took out. So that's the pump. And uh, I, I think this is a very cleverly built machine. I like it. Um, you know, I, I think they built it so that you would never, ever service it. Um, they wanted you to buy another one. There was some tamper-proof stuff in here along the way. You got to see some of it. And I just feel like they didn't want people servicing it. Probably because they didn't want the extended warranty nightmare if people said, hey, it's leaking water now and I didn't do a thing to it. You know, I think 
I think the DeLonghi people are pretty smart. This is a very, I think this is made in France. This is a very well constructed and engineered piece. And I am happy to have had a chance to put it together and take it apart. Um, luckily, um, I was able to video exactly half of this. So hopefully by um, watching the reassembly, um, you can understand how I disassembled it simply in a different order. Getting into it, I kind of realized that it might be more of a project. And so I just, I, I said to myself, you know, I want to document this because there's a video out there which really is missing about three quarters of the disassembly and assembly process. And so hopefully by getting 50% of it, um, We've done enough here to educate a few people. If I've just helped one person fix their $300 coffee machine with a $28 part, I mean, this is 28 bucks. I'll show it working when it's done. Um, I'll be very happy. I'm going to go test it right now. Thanks for watching. Okay. We've loaded uh, some Starbucks and boy. It's been a couple of months. Uh, we bought one of these things, which is the Sotec $50 one, and it's good. It's okay. The coffee's not as good. Let's hope this works. Let's go for a two banger, see if this works. All right, so normally if I'm just going to get like a cup of regular coffee, I'll just um, hit that again. It will probably be mostly water and not as much coffee. That appears to be working. It's the cycle is a little bit short. Um, I may have had it reset to factory or something. It's possible that the cycle is shortened due to um, some kind of button sequence that I pushed. I'll have to look it up on how to reset the default time back to what it used to be, but this is pretty much the way it used to work only the cycle used to be longer. So I think that it's going to be functional now. It's making coffee come out, whereas before it didn't. But the cycle's not lasting as long. And so, yeah, well, we'll have to figure out how to change the duration on that. I'm sure there's some sort of a sequence, but that's it. Um, thanks for watching. I think this is going to be uh, a good machine for us now. Thanks.